Okay, so I'm uh, with Becky Morley, who's the managing director of a company that offers interactive music therapy in care homes. Uh, Becky, thanks for, for joining us. Um, right, e explain. <laughs> what, 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 what's, uh, what is it that your company does? How long have you been doing it? So my company is called Musical Moments. Um, and what we do, we're going to care homes, mainly care homes, but we work with loads of different uh, community groups um, all across the country now. Um, and we provide interactive music sessions. So we use music as either like a way of therapy, especially people who've got dementia, or use it as a way to help people connect in the community. So we do a lot of work with, uh, like I say, not just older people, we work with maybe groups with people with mental health issues, so we can help obviously, um, them to communicate using music so it's a really nice job and uh, it'll be 10 years um in a few months like september next year so we'll be oh, right, wow. so that, that's quite quite a good, good long while then. Um, <laughs> so, so do you have uh, a number of people that work with you across the country to, to deliver these things yeah so it, it was something that i started off myself it was my own idea uh, the idea came from um my nan um she had dementia and she was in a care home and obviously it was, I'd never really sort of experienced that before. She was my first experience of dementia. Um, and I did music. Music was my subject that I wanted to do. I loved it at school. It was the only subject I really sort of engaged with, really. Um, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do with it. I knew I wanted to study music, but I didn't know what direction and what career path I wanted to go down. So I did my music degree and then um, still wasn't sure. Um, but mm -hmm. I did community music placement while I was at uni in my yeah. year. And that was doing music with people in hospitals, care homes, schools, prisons like we work with loads of different groups and did cool. community music with those groups again for the same reason that we do now and then I went to my nan's care home when I'd finished uni and offered to do a sing-along and a bit of music with them and the care home really enjoyed it and said um that was great can we book you again how much do you charge and I didn't know what to say <laughs> <laughs> plug, plug, figure out the sky so how how often would you get tend to go into a particular care home is it kind of a a regular thing that that you do with particular residents or is it yeah so usually obviously at the moment it's um on hold for, until we can get back in the care homes of course um but usually the most average booking is sort of once a month so we'll go once a month to the care home others will have us in every other week and then i have about four or five clients that i go to on a weekly basis as well so they really do value the service and they get a lot out of it and they obviously see an improvement in the residents when we go in obviously for us to go in ever so so frequently as well absolutely, so. absolutely. And, and when when you say you've got these uh few residents is that kind of one-to-one -one sessions or is that kind of more of a group it's normally group yeah so the sessions we normally do are group sessions so we'll work with anyone we'll say the perfect number is about 12 to be in a group um sometimes we have less sometimes more sometimes we have to carry them and they have the whole every single resident from the home there um yeah. like, you know 30 people 40 people in the room um so it just depends really but yeah it's nice and varied i also do offer one-to-ones as well there's not a popular uh, there was one lady that i was working with for the last couple of years um and i was seeing her on a weekly basis doing one-to-one -one music with her um yeah. but that was a little bit more in depth it wasn't just that wasn't more of a group class that was more using instruments doing one-to-one -one stuff singing um and she used to play piano as well so it was lovely because she i'd bring the piano and she could play so yeah, yeah. it was really nice it's great so so what um instruments do you play um, I was first study violin, so that's what I've been playing since I was seven. Um, didn't take it seriously until I was about 14. And when I got 14, I was like, yeah, I really want to do this now. So I actually did practice from then <laughs> properly. <laughs> put some effort in um that was my study my first study uh, was at uni was violin i also did take piano as well and um i can now play the ukulele which is part of the session so that's part right. of going it's just a really portable instrument and yeah. really easy to use and uh, it's just good function it's easy to play so it's yeah. Yeah. and i'm not quite mastered i have a guitar haven't quite mastered it yet though so it's right. a bit harder than the ukulele <laughs> the guitar's the next one then yeah hopefully Excellent. and um what would you say is kind of the, the best part of your job? It, sa it sounds that there's lots of really good parts of it, but what would you say is the best part of it? Oh, it's definitely, it's what I miss the most at the minute actually, is the reactions that you get from the residents. It's so much fun because how we do it is we have a different session. I change it every week. So I've got like, I've got 100 session plans that we do. Right. Um, and we're always creating new ones as well. Um, but the I will normally change it every week because I, I go to out between sort of 10 and 14 care homes a week that I'll do oh, so okay. I do quite a lot um so obviously after a week I'm ready to change the session anyway <laughs> so yes, yeah. a bit sick of it um so yeah we um 
we'll normally like say do a, a range of sort of, of different activities in that session um and just the reactions you get are incredible especially when you work with people with dementia um yeah. they're harder to work with because they're harder to communicate sometimes the communication might uh, might you know they might be struggling with communication yeah. so actually trying to get on to you know onto the same level as them so they can actually respond and it's lovely because you do sometimes it might take 20 minutes I mean I go for an hour session and yeah. sometimes it might take you know 20 30 minutes just to warm the group up um, yeah. and then once you're halfway through then you've got them yeah. and then you the lady in the corner who wasn't engaging at all who was staring off into space she's suddenly watching you and she's following you around the room or she's maybe tapping her fingers or tapping her foot or moving a yeah. mouth to the words so that's for me is like the my absolute favorite part of the job it's so rewarding um, and then you'll get some of the uh, older people that will just say um they'll just be really vocal and say like oh that was brilliant you know yeah. I've been at this camp for years and this is the best thing I've seen since I've been here they'll say things like that which is lovely yeah, yeah. uh sometimes they'll they'll speak their mind if they're in a bad mood lots of things obviously don't take it personally because you know sometimes they don't always mean it so one of the joys of getting all them as I understand is that you can say what you want and, uh, and normally get away with it so that's, uh, that's one thing I'm looking forward to so I would imagine then that given the kind of the fact that the population is aging this is going to be a growth um industry really where you're providing that vital care and um therapy um so i, I suppose it's going to be something that will, will grow into the future yeah hopefully obviously when we can get back on our feet because obviously we've tried to keep going as a business the last few months uh, which has been really hard another challenge obviously for business owners if anyone who's thinking of going to the business things like this happen obviously not like this quite like this no no happen to rock the boat a little bit and you just have to try and adjust yeah. uh, we have tried to do like online sessions and we've done like an online package it's yeah. not quite gone down as well because as we hoped because obviously our business model is so heavily based on interactive session and obviously when you're online you lose a lot of that unfortunately so we are just sort of playing a waiting game and waiting to get back at the moment uh, but yeah hopefully we're hoping to grow I mean it was just me to, to begin with I started the business myself and then after like three or four years I was so busy like I had that many caring bookings I'd look to my diary and I'd be like three months booked up uh, yeah. and Karen's would call me like we want to have you in to do the entertainment and I couldn't so then yeah. obviously the next logical step was take on staff so I did I had at one point I think I had about seven staff was mm -hmm. the I had at one point um that did get quite stressful because it was I was still I was managing everyone I was managing the whole business and anyone else that helped me I was doing all the admin I was doing my sessions so yeah. it just got to a point where I thought I need to change it up a little bit here because I'm struggling to cope so I then changed the model switched it up and turned it into a franchise oh right okay yeah franchise the model so yeah. obviously that's where I everybody who was employed sort of swapped roles they became like their own business owners then so they were owning their own business and they actually made more money because they weren't just getting paid uh, like a wage they were actually getting paid for their full session um, yeah. and I didn't have as much responsibility so I still have responsibility over them now but they have they're more they're their own boss so they can do what they want I'm there as a guide rather than a boss now which is nice yeah. and I can advise them on stuff when they need help uh, help them with their marketing help them grow um, and it'd be nice so it's good to see them grow like franchisees are really good I have 15 franchisees now we go as high up as high up far up as up north as Glasgow and then as down south as far as Surrey uh, oh, south. Right. So, yeah we're all sort of all over the place so yeah. ideally I'd like to grow um, and have a few more around the country would be nice because um, like I say we're a good little community at the moment yeah. we're growing obviously the brand is growing across the country as well especially in the care industry mm -hmm. we're quite well known on all of the like leading activity providers yeah. as well in the, in the industry so it'd be nice for us to grow and then it's also nice to see my franchisees grow because obviously they are their own business sure. some of them I think two or three of them actually have their own staff working for them as well so it's a nice little family that goes down so yeah they're actually doing really well because they'll they're working loads of sessions I've got some that are working you know my really high performers have got yeah. like two staff members including and, and themselves as well so yeah there's loads of scope for growth which yeah. is great so so if if for example we have pupils at uh, CCSE who are interested in music I mean, what would say, say they, they wanted to join you and, and maybe take up a franchise? What would you encourage them to do? Um, well, I would certainly say get really proficient with the instrument. Um, it's a very sort of um, personality job. So you do need a lot of like your own personality. You need to be quite confident. Um, with 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 other people and, and working with groups so not be not be afraid to address a big group um, mm -hmm. which is really important um obviously 
and music is a really good, good skill to have. I'm glad I did it. I don't think I would have been do, be doing what I'm doing now with if I hadn't studied music. I definitely wouldn't have gone down that path. Um, but like I say, the the career path of community musician is is massive. It wasn't a thing really about 10 years ago. And I did say when I started doing it, I could see it was going to grow. And I said in like 10, 15 years time, community music is going to be a career path. And it is now, I believe, quite a few. I think there's like two unis or three unis that offer it as a degree course now. Mm, that wow. didn't used to exist until about five years ago. So yeah. you can study community music as a degree now, uh, which is great. It's a really great skills out and there's a lot of work like people don't realize and because it's such a new industry mm. people think they like say so they see music and they think teaching or performing and that's all you can do but they're like say so there's this whole new industry now of community music and people do want it and there are people out there that do want to have the services um so not just our service like other community musicians there's a lot of scope for it with other different community groups so i mean i see we've only touched the surface with working with older people really i mean there's so many other community groups that you can absolutely. work with yeah, yeah. so yeah there's absolutely those you can do. so it's, it's a great career option for those who want to do music and who are worried that there's just two career paths you have to take um because there isn't there's an extra one now <laughs> a lot more out there brilliant and what, just one more question from me um when you were at school or when you were like little, what was it you wanted to do? What was what was your dream job when you when you were younger? Uh, that's a really good question. Uh, I'm not really sure. Um, I think well, like I say, when I get hit about fourteen, that was when I was like, yeah, I'm doing music, yeah. and I didn't want to be a performer. Actually, I did want to go and play professionally, so I did study classical music, and I wanted to. My dream at that age was to be in orchestras and yeah. go on tour with like the big orchestras and stuff. But um, yeah, I realised it wasn't for me. When I got to music college, I was like, no. This isn't me. <laughs> it was good fun, but um, yeah, doing it professionally, I think, is different to playing like in yeah like, orchestras that I play, which was fun. But when you do it as a career, it, it does change. So just do be aware that if you've got something that you really love, if you do it as a profession, it doesn't not suck the fun out of it, but it does. It becomes your job, and it's not your hobby anymore. So you have to take it more seriously. So that's the only thing I would say. Um, you will still enjoy it, but it you know you have to. It's not a hobby anymore. It's a job, and it yeah, yeah. does yeah. take a little bit of something from it. But yeah, if you love it to start with. That's always a really, really good yeah. stopping point. So yeah, definitely do something that you love and go down that route 100 percent Fantastic. Uh, Becky, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. You take care. Okay, me too. Bye. Yeah.